Thank you all today. So this is the last session of that. And I told you the other day, this year, we could almost plan a whole union around this year because America was so shaken up during this year. 1968, you have several major events that changed the country. We have, um, this work. We have the Tet Offensive, which is a big surprise attack by the Viet Cong against a bunch of American held hamlets in South Vietnam. We have the assassination of Martin Luther King. You got the assassination of Robert Kennedy. And then, uh, I don't have a list up here, we've got the Democratic Convention of 1968 in Chicago that uh, creates a lot of tension. All right, the Tet Offensive is uh, attacked by the Viet Cong that coincides with the Vietnamese New Year. Now, we kind of monitor when people would travel in South Vietnam from one village to another, but the Vietnamese New Year was a huge holiday, so we didn't notice anything out of the ordinary there. So, there would be things like coffins that are shipped with guns in them instead of bodies. Uh, things that maybe we thought were firecrackers were actually bombs. So you had a lot of villagers end up being Viet Cong agents, and there was almost 100 places throughout South Vietnam where the Viet Cong attacked. Now, you can see this. Um, this is really a scene that makes me think of Full Metal Jacket. That movie I was telling y'all about a minute ago. Um, U.S. soldiers on patrol in a city that's been bombed out and destroyed. Now, initially, the Viet Cong made some advances, but eventually we were able to regain control of all those cities after about a month. So it would look like, hey, we won. So from a military standpoint, the Viet Cong were defeated. This is where it was important, though. From a psychological standpoint, America thought, crap, I don't know if we're ever going to win this war. So this is when the support for the war at home really starts to falter, and a lot of journalists start to become skeptical. And um, I said that McNamara was replaced, a um, guy named Clark Clifford comes in to replace him, and this is called the living room war for good reason. People could see on nightly news footage what was going on, and they could see in things like Life Magazine what happens, like you can see the termination here of a Viet Cong agent who's willing to kill himself to go and attack an American embassy. Uh, and then we've got the Gerald Long photo that, um, of Saigon Street Justice that's given us a bad rep throughout the world. And Johnson right here, how's he looking? these two images? Stress. Stress, right? That's about the best word you could think of that. Um, he realized that he lost Walter Cronkite's support, which he did, and he had lost the American people. And Johnson actually went on TV and said that he would not seek and he would not accept the Democrat um, Party's nomination for the presidency in 1968. There's not many times when you have a sitting president in their first elected term that ever does not run for a second term. But he realized that his popularity and approval ratings were so low. I mentioned the King assassination was one of the devastating event from that year. Uh, you know, this was a lot of the black community, they felt like King was their voice. So when he dies, uh, this leads to a lot of chaos, a lot of rioting in urban areas. I remember he was shot on Memphis Hotel balcony by James Earl Ray. And then about two months later, Robert Kennedy is shot. Robert Kennedy, remember, had been his younger bro his older brother's attorney general, and he had just won the California primary for the Democratic nomination for, per for the presidency. So he's looking like he's kind of got the clear route to be the Democratic nomination in 1968. He gets shot in the hotel kitchen by this guy, Sirhan Sirhan. And he was a Palestinian immigrant. There was some um, talk about conspiracy, but the stated reason is that um, he was upset that Robert Kennedy supported Israel's right to exist. All right, so I mentioned another big thing was the Democratic Convention of 68. The Democratic Convention was really a big circus. There was, there was a lot of violence, a lot of protests there. Uh, Robert Kennedy had entered the race, but he had been killed. Eugene McCarthy shows up, and he wanted to end the war in Vietnam. And kind of the traditional candidate, since Johnson asked he wouldn't run, was going to be Hubert Humphrey, who was Johnson's vice president. Well, there's over 10,000 protesters that show up, so you see all this um, footage of what well, basically looks like, hold on, I'll get back to that in a second. You look like you got troops that are called out to keep order, things that we would usually see in like other countries around the world. And these troops are suppressing American free speech. And there's more talk to say. We've got scenes like this though broadcasting to people's homes. What do you see cops doing there? Yeah, it looks like they're trying to control rioters. This is the same kind of thing that we saw images of the Civil Rights Movement earlier in the week when we talked about the uh, Bloody Sunday at the Edmund Pettus Bridge. What up? Go back. Oh, okay. Gosh. All right, Dan Rather, I mentioned, actually got punched on the convention floor while he was reporting. So this is the kind of thing that people see there, so they're thinking, yeah, the Democrats don't need to be running the country. They can't run their own convention. So going back to this slide, um, this is broadcasting in people's homes, and people start to really 
lean towards the Republicans in 68, and that's why this guy is able to slide to the White House. Remember, Nixon was defeated by Kennedy in 60, and then he ran for the California governor's race um, a few years after that, and he lost that, and a lot of people thought he was done with politics. He comes back, he becomes a president who we'll know will go down infamously as the guy who tried to um, lie to the American people about Watergate. But he wins the election basically because of a divided Democratic Party. Now, we did not win Vietnam. You know, it was not a technically declared war, but if it had been, you would definitely say, I think, that we lost. You see here Americans um, trying to get an H out of Saigon as quick as they could. This is the U.S. Embassy in Saigon. These helicopters are waiting to take people to weighing American ships. Um, I've read that the song that was played to give people the signal for you need to get out of the city was White Christmas. Whenever Americans heard that song, you knew you got to leave. That's like this code for get the heck out of Dodge. Um, I mentioned a few minutes ago My Lie. My Lie was a thing that really destroys America's conscience about Vietnam because, like I said, there were a lot of times when you couldn't tell who was Viet Cong and who wasn't. This guy, Lieutenant William Kelly, leads American troops who killed about 200 Vietnamese. And his justification was that these were Viet Cong operatives. But you can see here that the U.S. conscience suffers a big blow from this. While the American people might have said, we're with you, some American people might have said that, on the bigger world scene, this is what's going on. <coughs> so my lie usually associated that with really making us look bad through the Vietnam War. Um, then along comes Henry Kissinger with Nixon. Kissinger said, let's pull American troops out, let's make the Vietnamese responsible for fighting their own war. This program is called Vietnamization. So again, you got to recognize Kissinger with that. Kissinger was actually um, foreign born himself. And then we talk about a lot of protests. You need to remember Kent State. Kent State is where we're going to listen to some music, um, some music that's going to incorporate Kent State on Monday, a song by Crosby, Stills, and Nash. Anybody know who they are? Know what band people know Crosby, Stills, and Nash? Uh, it sounds right. familiar, but no. We're going to listen to a song called Ohio by them, and the, what they keep repeating over and over in the chorus is Four Dead in Ohio. Uh, this was a student protest at Kent State where the governor called out the National Guard, and you ended up having four students shot. Uh, from what I read, a couple of them weren't even involved in the protest, just bystanders on campus. So it's making the government look bad again. All right, and I'm just going to be able to finish today. But another thing that shows us that we weren't always hearing the truth from the government is the publishing of the Pentagon Papers. These were published by the New York Times in 1971. Um, Daniel Ellsberg is responsible for this, but there was actually a lawsuit between the New York Times and the government to try to keep these suppressed, and the New York Times won. I was able to print these, you see here, by a decision of 63. This shows that our leaders were not being truthful to us about Vietnam. So this is one thing that starts to add to American distrust of our government. And when I made this PowerPoint a couple years ago, this is when the WikiLeaks case had just come out where the Julian Assange guy had released several government secrets that uh, he was at threat of being prosecuted for, and then he eventually fled to Russia. Do you remember, where is he now? He's in England right now. England? All right. Still claiming political asylum, or yeah. is he actually being tried now? Yeah, he's still at an embassy. Okay. All right, and another thing that you got to remember is the War Powers Act. What did we say the Tonkin Gulf Resolution did? Gulf Resolution, uh, but more soldiers. We just talked about it. Say so what? They put more uh, soldiers here. More soldiers? So what did they give President Johnson? Power. Power, right, to send troops. It was like a blank check, right? Right. This is 1973, about eight years down the road when Congress says, we screwed up. They're like, let's take away that power. So the War Powers Act says that the President only has a limited time when he can send troops into combat without congressional approval. So the Tom Gulf Resolution you can think of as broadening the war with um, Congress giving the President a blank check. War Powers Act, let's limit the President once again.